Welcome to the Encore, everybody. And Walk Worthy is here today with the Pepsi Coke Fago Cola <laughs> Challenge. Why is this happening, you ask? Because, as promised a while ago, just the other day, Nesto and I were administered the test by former Pepsi employee, Mr. Neil Thompson. And it was an epic competition <laughs> of taste identification. The problem is we lost the recording. We lost the whole recording. Everybody's mad. Nesto didn't even want to show up today, matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have done, so the test is fresh because we thought we could now identify, having already tasted these, we invited our walk-worthy hosts in, Mrs. Lindsay, Lindsay Hudgens and Aaron Morris, to do the test fresh. So you can see how it went, and then we'll, we will return to Encore. So before we start, we have former Pepsi high-ranking executive <laughs> near founder, Mr. Neil Thompson, to explain the history of cola. Yeah, thanks. So we are going to do the Pepsi Cola Challenge. We're going to throw Fago in there. Fago, a uh, Detroit brand cola, uh, but also considered like the third in the in the – in the rank, I guess. But really? so uh, Pepsi and Cola have been fighting out this battle for years. It really started back in the 80s uh, where Pepsi started t challenging everyone who drinks soda that they can like theirs better. And actually, they do. 57% of the people that drink do this test pick Pepsi, even though most people like Coke. Mm -hmm. So uh, Coke and Pepsi have been around for years. There's subtle differences in them, and we'll explain those as you go along. But today, each uh, flavor notes. <laughs> different flavor notes. There are, because there are different <laughs> reasons. Coca-Cola is made with a cocoa bean, right? An actual used to be made with cocaine, but it is no longer. And this does not that. have the cocoa bean in it. So. Uh, it has a little bit different taste buds. Does anybody know the line from the Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire? We didn't light it, but we tried no, to no, fight no, no, it. No, 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 <laughs> about, no. About, about Pepsi and Coke. No. Yeah, Pepsi. Rock a roll of Cola, Cola Wars. Wars, yeah. Mm. I can't take it anymore. anymore. Yeah. We, we didn't, didn't start, start the fire. fire. Yeah, we good. didn't yeah. light it. Mm -hmm. so, okay, okay what do you want to have? So what we're going to do is we have three sodas. They do not know what is what. The only person that knows that is me. Uh, they're going to try, they're going to sip one. They're going to take a drink of water just to clean their mouth a little bit and go to the next and go to the next. <laughs> right? clean, clean your, your mouth out. Wash your mouth out. You know? <laughs> I need a spell. Uh, just now, so yeah, you need to. <laughs> they don't t tell until the end, right? That's like, typically they don't, they what don't we go, do. Oh, I think this get. is pretty, yeah. And we're going to share oh, the yeah. Nesto and your results remember. too? We'll share the results okay. at the end. So you do have to remember, you can go back and taste again if you'd like heart rate is but rising. really that's what happened the, the true pepsi the true soda challenge is as soon as you taste it you make up your mind in your head and there's no changing well, it. Right so now. you don't but he's saying you don't have to do you that. don't have to do that oh, but yeah you shouldn't go back and take pepsi it, so this is very informal so <clears throat> why don't we start with this first one closest to you <clears throat> <laughs> Do you think you know? Don't I say. I think it. so. Okay, don't say. I think so. I think I know. Cleanse. Why are you drinking so hard? <laughs> <laughs> are we drinking the same thing? Are you getting sweaty? Ours are, 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 are in the same order. 118. I'm at 118. <laughs> You're having like a cardiac <laughs> arrest over it? <laughs> it's all that sugar. <laughs> That's what happened to me. I was a nervous wreck. I get I so nervous stressed. too. I don't know why. Okay. I think my Go hands are shaking. Go for the second now. <clears throat> my hands are shaking. Uh, I did this not This is the most adrenaline I've had in a while. <laughs> you know, to get you out more. Okay, hold on. I don't feel like the cleanser was enough. Okay, I think I know what that is. It's been so long since I've Mom, had to take more than one drink. You can take another drink right now. Because now same I'm one. nervous. This usually happens. I guess before we even get the results, if you're walking into a store and you're going to buy one of the two, Coke or Pepsi, which one are you typically going to pick? Coke, Pepsi, 100%. Okay. So that's a good standard. No today. cleanse? Well, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't feel like it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long since I've had any pop that it's hard to... Soda. Soda. Coke. Pop. She's a Midwesterner to the <clears throat> core. I am a Midwesterner. To the to core. Pop. I'm not sad about it. Okay. I'm stressed. Give your break. No retaste. <laughs> Aaron just went for a retaste, and she's got a look on her face. She. I think I think I know, but she may be confused. 
Okay. But it is a little harder Why than Why does it taste so different out of these glasses? That's all the point. <laughs> it, it's not the glasses. It's, you think it's the, this tastes like glass. It does, because <laughs> when I took this drink, I remember drinking <clears throat> um, pop out of glasses at my grandma's house. That's exactly what it yeah. tastes like. Okay. <laughs> Which is why I think I knew the answer, but now I'm stressed. Okay, so we have a Coke, <clears throat> we have a Pepsi person. What's the order? Wait, do we need to say it at the same time? No, you don't have to. I'll tell you who's okay, right. Hold who's on, not. hold on. Aaron Small, that's all. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> okay, I, okay, okay, I think I know. I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, what do you got? I'm so scared. I think this is Coke. I think okay. this is Pepsi. Okay. Oh Next. no, you gotta I'm run it all down. Run them all down. Cola. Oh, I just lost my number. I think this is Vago. This okay. is Coke. Okay. And I think this is Pepsi. Vago. Okay. Which one did you like the best? They all tasted the same to me, I'm gonna be honest. Okay. This one tasted different. Okay. And so you said Pepsi? Yeah. Coke, Coke Fago. Fago. And you said Coke, Coke, Fago, Pepsi. Neither of you got it right. No, stop, you really? You did get a couple right. <laughs> so the order is Coke. Kay. This is Coke? Yeah. That is Coke. Pepsi, I'm Fago. shocked. Really? I don't know, again, I haven't had this stuff in so long. And you called I got this Coke, one. Pepsi. That's what you did. Now that yeah. you said that, I swear I can smell yeah. like a. So, I called Coke Coke. I couldn't remember. I what called Pepsi. Went to what? But that's because I don't really wouldn't really drink either of those. I would drink this one. Mm -hmm. You should. Okay, but you got okay. So you yeah, couldn't yeah. identify the yeah. difference. Yeah. yeah. Coke is gonna have uh, Pepsi's gonna have a more sugary taste to your mouth because it's made with vanilla. Uh, These and Coke taste does not the have same to me. But I had already decided. That's why I didn't change my mind. <laughs> So this smelled like a more familiar smell to me, mm -hmm. and I usually would drink Pepsi, so I thought this has to be Weird. Pepsi. Yeah. I but think I, I again haven't had anything for so something. long that oh I can't remember. God. I'm serious. <laughs> oh my! Because when goodness. I well, although I did guess it, I used to drink Coke out of glasses at my grandpa's house, and <clears> when <throat> I took that drink, I was like, I'm at grandma's. House. <laughs> so that's how I guess it. <laughs> okay. Coke has more of a caramel flavor to it, and hence the darkness. You can notice Coke's uh, a tad darker than Pepsi. But most people will usually pick the Pepsi and the Pepsi Challenge. Oh, it sounds like favorite. Pepsi now. I know. Now that what, I know, now, I'm now like, oh, yeah, know. I know. Most people, but Pepsi wins the most know. challenges because the sweetness of the vanilla and Pepsi people like. And so they go towards the sweetness. I like vanilla Coke. There you go. There you uh, go. You might there like you Pepsi. Go. We should even throw it off and put a vanilla Coke in there. No, Pepsi usually tastes weird to me, but these glasses are doing something to it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Walkworthy. Uh, now we will re- Oh. I got them all right, and Nesto got them all wrong. <laughs> and he was certain, he was, really he was certain that he was gonna get them all right. So now we will return to our regularly scheduled programming. Have a great day. And welcome back. That was uh, that was awful. So got my Pepsi, victorious, <laughs> victorious drink. I'm gonna go home, open my glass bottle of Coke, and I'm gonna say, "I saw her, baby. She she meant nothing to me." <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. I can't believe. Anyways, let's go. So we received a great email. Great email. On uh, if you want to email a question, you can email us at encore at rockfenton.com. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a great question this week about yeah. prayer. Yeah, it was real good. And the question was not, it, it's, it's very specific about prayer. Mm -hmm. The question was for someone that, uh, someone they love is going through a, um, a, a disease, a sickness, and they feel very powerless. Mm. They want to know, is prayer powerful? And there's a question about the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Does more people praying make prayer more powerful? Does the laying out of hands, does that have any kind of power attached to it? Mm -hmm. Let's begin very generically with is prayer powerful? And the question we're really asking here is, can prayer actually change reality? Sure. Can prayer actually take, can prayer actually change the nature of reality? If the train is going right. east, can prayer stop the train? And that's a question, and people answer this differently. They definitely answer it differently. Uh, some believers I know will say, thing, I, I, it's a famous line. Prayer doesn't change the world. Prayer changes your heart. You've heard this one? Yeah, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I mean, 
I don't want to be a jerk. Like, no, yeah, I don't do that. I, either. I just internally, I said, don't be a jerk to myself. Okay. But no, I don't agree with that at all. Um, it does change your heart, sure. Yes, and I think as but you, but that no, you can change. I mean, like otherwise, we have to throw the Old and New Testament away. Elijah it, stopped the weather and brought it back again through prayer. That's not his heart. That's not his heart. That's the world. That's the outside external yeah. world actually physically changing mm -hmm. based upon one person's request to the to the Lord God of heaven. Yeah. Um. So yes. I did a study when I was a younger man, and I studied all of Christ's teaching on prayer. Wow. And when you do that, it jumps off the page. Sure. Because everything he says about prayer. Mm hmm. That's a terror. I, I, I go to college too much. I'm like, the word I have in my mind is it's efficacious. And I'm like, dang it. There's going to be, a, there almost was a nerd alert. I, 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 I was reaching for the nerd button. <laughs> my daughter does it now. She does the nerd alert. Nerd heart. alert. <laughs> I was going to, I was reaching, but then you um, stopped. But uh, if you read the teaching of Jesus, it's always about what it does. Yeah. That and I'm I'm gonna go to the Sermon on the Mount. I'm gonna and there's you go there and I go okay. I'll go to another one with Jesus. Go ask ahead. Ask and it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. <sighs> he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you, who when his son asks for a loaf will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, you will not give him a snake, will he? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask Him? I mean, that's, that's, that's very plain language. Yeah, and it's not, it doesn't leave the heart out, but it's not about changing your heart. It's not no. an internal thing. He's it's like, like you need something and you ask and He can do it. And your good Father wants to, to meet your needs. 100%. So I, I won't go all through this. This in Luke, this precedes that exact thing where he said he tells this like parable. Suppose one of you has a friend, goes to him at midnight, lend me three loaves. Someone's come to town. I don't have enough food. And he says, I'm in bed. I'm not getting up. And he basically says, bang on the door and ask again. And he's talking about prayer because of your persistence. He gets up out of bed and gives him as much bread as he wants. That like he even says, like, ask with fervor and persistence and and there's a one lady who goes to the judge and she goes in yeah. every day and yeah, said the yeah. judge not because of his desire but because of her insistence mm -hmm. he finally to get her to go away he's like yeah and, it's a, and jesus is telling the story yes he's like listen keep on bothering dad he'll hear you eventually it's it, it is funny in that way but it's also like you keep on knocking yeah. You ask and keep on asking. Yeah. You knock and keep on knocking. You seek and keep on seeking. Well, again, with Elijah, he prayed at the, end of the drought, at, at the end of the drought seven times. He sent his guy back. Go look. He bows down, pray. Go look. Nothing. The sky is blue. It's hot. It's dry. Praising it. Go look. Goes back seven times. On the seventh time, he's like, okay, there looks like to be a little cloud on the horizon coming. And then there's a heavy shower. But he prays over and over and over. Not to say we can manipulate God either. It's a whole nother conversation. But yes, no, you can change the world. Like, you literally can. Like, it's... Okay, let's say God can change the world. God can change the and world. And he through, gives yeah. us access to him. He's like, yeah. ask me. Okay, fair, yeah. Um, I just want to make sure we clarify, because... Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Um, you got to be careful, because this gets crazy. Oh, people get crazy with this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think as Americans, we've been infected with naturalism more than we even care to understand. That a lot of us think of the world as it's almost like the world is set. It's going to be what it's going to be, yeah. and nothing supernatural happens. We almost think that God cannot come down from heaven mm -hmm. and change anything. A lot of us, we say we do, but functionally we live as though we can't. Yeah. We live as, we say I believe one thing and live as though something else is true. And so we're almost afraid of like, if I pray and really mean this, if I pray and ask, if I beg God for something, does it come true? What does that mean? So we always mm -hmm. give God the out. Lord, if it's your will. You yeah. Know? And I understand that James, the if your will, and there's a humility in this, but we are allowed like children to ask. Yeah. I mean, he, when my children ask me for things, there it's it's an ask. There is no they're young. There's no leading. There's just the un, all unadulterated ask. Dad, I want a bike. Can I get a bike? Like it's just this is what I want. I'm asking you because you provide for me, and I trust in your goodness and love for me. Mm -hmm. We're allowed to ask. I agree. And the thing. Uh, okay, let me ask you this. I, I think I know the answer. 
Have you ever prayed to God for a miracle and seen a miracle done? Yes. Dang straight. Yes. Like uh, more uh, times than I care to admit. Yeah. Not care to admit. More times than I could probably recount. I, I agree with you. Yeah. It's not just, oh, there was this one time. Because then you could almost say, well, maybe something weird just happened there. Like, no, I can I can draw a straight line, a short straight line from when I prayed and what I prayed about to some miraculous thing that happened that blew my mind to this day. Listen, if let's say there's a joke, there's a joke at our church. And it's not, but it's like a, it's a running gag mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we often will have like an outdoor event and the rain's going to come. And so we'll beg God. Yeah. I remember one time we prayed, us, we all gathered around, we asked God, God, a rain's coming. I'm supposed to be here the next 30 minutes. Lord, we need two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. I said, keep the rain away till five o'clock. It was a dumb thing to pray. <laughs> Dude, I kid you not, it's 455, I'm baptizing people in a stinking horse trough outside. Yeah. And the, the clouds are coming. And five o'clock hits and the rain falls. Yeah. And the people that were there were like, this is the creature I've ever seen in my life. And I'm just like, thank you, Lord, for... For meeting us here, helping us out. And one of the guys was like, you should ask for six. We gotta clean this up. Like we gotta put this all away. You should have prayed till you know. Um, yeah. But this is uh, this is this happens so often where we ask God for favor in the midst of reality pushing against us. It's unreal, dude. I agree. I, I have a similar story. And again, here we go. We're doing it right now. I'm trying not to like go back. Like we, it's 14 stories, right? Like people at the rock right now heard you say that if they've been around any time they they can remember things like that that happened during outdoor things but one of the things that happened is we were in green bay um doing a preaching thing an evangelistic thing in a park and a bunch of people came that night and it was dark and there were, there was like a massive like storm coming and we have screenshots of the radar we we prayed for protection and we have screenshots of where there's like a in a cutout of the storm where the storm like came and like formed around the park and you could see like lightning striking over green bay and i finished the message and it rained instantly like same same exact thing and we ask god please just let the message go forth to these people tonight they've come there seems to be a movement here like of they're being drawn to something uh uh you know the the hope of the gospel and and we took we people there were all kinds of people screenshotting the green storm that went around the park i mean so many things like that there's stories to tell for days for the days point, the point is dude two weeks ago good friday i go see a lady in the hospital and she's talking to me i got this i'm going on i got back pain two days later she's in a coma unto death mm -hmm. an infection has seized her heart um, she's she's in ICU and they're losing her. I remember somebody I did a call late at night and there's there's just fear in the heart of a husband and a mother. It's mm -hmm. I mean Angie, we took hands and we cried out to God. Like I don't often cry mm -hmm. in prayer, but I was like, Lord God, like there's these little kids. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like God, please. Yeah. And it was there was no um if I feel like Jacob in the tent wrestling, like Lord please mm -hmm. there was there was no hope yeah like the, the, the call we got was like this we have two days saying goodbyes I got a picture yesterday and she's in her bed smiling and she's the feeding tube's been removed it's unreal what it's God has done it's, it's just shocking I and it's the people that have been involved in it, it it's kind of you don't even know what to do with it like you don't mm -hmm. even know like the train was going this direction, and God just put Superman came and pushed the train back. Yeah, it's an impossible thing to happen, and there's no explanation. There, there's no. It wasn't like they did the chemotherapy or something. And nope. it, yeah. This is this is there is they don't know what happened, why it came, and they have no idea what pushed it back. Right. It was here, and now it's gone. It's gone. God be praised. Yes. There is yes. power it, in prayer. Yes. It's where it's not. It's okay to ask the Lord. It's okay to ask. And I think it's okay things. to just ask. Like, I, I don't, you know, I don't denigrate or criticize people, and I've, I've certainly said it myself, if it be your will. But we don't have to pray like that. And that's not what James is talking about either. Like, when you pray, say, if it be your will. That's not what he's talking about. Say, when you make plans to go to a town and stay there a year and make such and such, when you have this assumption of how your life is going to go, you should have said, if the Lord wills, I will do such and such a thing. That's what that's talking it's about. holding your plans. Prayer's not even, yeah. yeah Open-handed before the Lord as you walk in life. Right, right. Um, so we believe prayer changes the world. Yes. Prayer changes. 
I don't know why we believe God doesn't, but God does. God can change the world. Um, he, he, we don't own him. There's no, there, and we're, let's get into this right now. Um, the next question is, does many people praying make prayer more powerful? Okay. Uh, all right. So I have some stuff about this written down. Um, on the surface, I'm not going to say yes. Like, I'm not going to say, yeah, get more people, and then there'll be a higher chance of your loved one getting healed. Because we don't want to, like, no, it's, seeking God's face. Is, no, there's no methodology. There's no way to manipulate him. We are not pagans. Mm -mm. We are not. We don't dance. No, nor is the Lord up there going, you know, like, hey, get five more people and, you know, get, you form a committee and yeah. a, get a quorum. And if they I'll, get 35 people. Exactly. I'm going to hear this. Prayer. No, no, it's not what it is. And so, but in the Bible, you do see God in certain contexts respond to large groups of people praying for certain reasons. Yes. For example, national repentance. To he, Nineveh. Nineveh is the greatest example. I have that written down. So he from the king from the, the, yeah. the king all the way to the peasants. Yes, he relents concerning judgment because he saw everybody repent in prayer. Uh, so it did matter, but that was also calling each individual to repent of sin in that case. Um, so then there's another case in Acts 12 where Peter is in prison. And he may have been set to be executed the next day, but it says in the Bible that the church was praying. The church was praying together in the night, and an angel came and released the chains off Peter, put a uh, like a trance upon the guards and the other prisoners where they didn't wake up and led Peter out in the night. He didn't know if it was a dream or was waking. He went back home, opened the door, and found the church praying for him. And so they're all together there praying on Peter's behalf. So definitely people pray together. And so I have, does more equal more? I don't think necessarily, but it does seem that it does matter sometimes in certain ways for certain reasons. It, and, it's it's hard to like dice that, but it's like, and even in like like the parables we read about the the the, the guy knocking at the house at night and the woman going to the judge. There seems to be this like keep on asking this like, almost yeah. this reward for insistence. Well, that's the, that's the next thing I wrote. Um, so I think yeah. that it, it's not a. There's again, God is not a pagan deity that can you must you. Know, Jump up twice, yeah. slap your knee, and chicken, right. chicken wing it, and he'll do this. It's, yeah. it's not a code like that. Right. But there seems to be these things, this leaning in, mm -hmm. this asking, it seems to have some effect. Um, and so we're not, it's not a guarantee. It's not here's the, I'm not going to give you a prayer of Jabez promise. If you pray this prayer, you're going to get all it'll these cool things. expand your territory. Straight yeah, up. No, yeah, no. Because um, we don't, we don't we don't own God and we don't do things. We don't put a quarter in the machine and get a Coke out of it. Right. Or a Pepsi, whatever the crap it might be. You wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, Let me have a sip. I'll let you know. <laughs> Dang it, dude. Um, well, the thing I want to say, I don't want anyone to feel, like I said earlier, that we don't we pray without faith. But this is true in the scriptures, too. Mm -hmm. Like the church praying for Peter. Mm -hmm. When Peter stood up, they freaks him out. Yeah. But they're praying for his release, and when, he, when God does it, they're like, oh, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> <It's> a ghost. <laughs> I know. I know. It's a spirit. I um, know. And then, can, um, what's John Baptist's dad's name? Is it Elizabeth and Zechariah? Zacharias? Zacharias. Uh, that's, that's King James. Keep talking. Okay. The king says <laughs> Zechariah. The authoritative. <laughs> The king, dude. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. But um, he is a priest. Yeah. And he has to go, uh, it's his time to go and light this candle in the temple. And that ritual the Jews did, something they were doing is they awaited Messiah. So they're literally doing this tradition that is calling upon God to bring Messiah into the world. And he's up there lighting the candle and the angel comes, says, Messiah coming. He's like, oh, like, the thing he's doing <laughs> yes. is supposed to be yeah. asking God to move. And God moves and freaks him out. Zacharias. Is that correct? Is that the king? No, it's not the king. In the days of Herod, this is the NASB, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zacharias. Man, speaking Greeks, messing up these cool Jewish names. But <laughs> it's possible other translations say Zacharias. Um, but he is involved in a exercise mm -hmm. to call upon God's mercy. Mm -hmm. And when God moves, it still freaks him out. Yes. So, so I'm just saying, it's not just us that do this. Other believers throughout history are asking God, and part of them is like, well, I'll quote it. I believe, help my unbelief. That's, that's real um, good. 
So is prayer powerful? Yes. Do many people, does it make prayer more powerful? We're not going to say yes with a blanket. But it seems to be that in the scriptures, sometimes a group of people coming in one heart to the Lord, it seems to... It's not irrelevant. It's not nothing? It's not nothing. No. But again... But it's not also like, it's not the reverse either. Like get a hundred yeah. people, they'll for sure get healed of cancer. It doesn't work like that. Elijah prayed by himself and the weather stopped and started, you know? So, you know, I don't know what kind of, I mean, okay. great question out there. Great viewer. question. And I hope this is helpful. I hope as you hear this, your, your desire is like for this lady who was in the hospital two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, every day, my wife, my children and I, we begged God for her life. It was a very insistent, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I almost felt like it was wrestling. I felt, and it doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't always yeah. feel like, but it felt like we were striving for this woman's life. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. God didn't have to hear our prayer. No. He doesn't owe it to any of us. No person on the earth has what Paul or Peter had. We don't have authority to call down the... We don't have Elijah power. I can't just no, call on not. fire upon the stinking enemies of the kingdom. No, we're not Old Testament prophets because Jesus has fulfilled the law and the prophets. There's a side lesson. So sometimes preachers like to say that they have this authority. That's, mm -mm. that's dangerous teaching. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those guys use that stuff to abuse and hurt people. Um, I don't have authority to... I can seek and ask the Lord. I can't command him. The Lord is not my servant. I am his. Right. Okay. Now here's the last one. Does the laying on of hands have power? Okay. I just want to say to this lady out there, she asked some really good questions, and I will credit her husband. She and her husband were discussing this, it sounded like. And these are really good, relevant questions. So, um, I mean, we're, we're, we're walking into a mystery. Mm hmm So I have, a, again... I'm not going to say an either or necessarily, but I have examples of things that are modeled in the scripture, the way people did things. It's not yes. a magic potion, like you said. Uh, First Kings 13, I'll just run down a couple things. First Kings 13, Elijah prays immediately for King Jeroboam's hand when he's asked to do so. So another th question she asks is, does it matter if you pray right then or can you pray later? So when he's asked, he prays. Um, so hold on, let me get the, uh, the laying on of hands. Okay. The apostles lay hands on the people commissioned to serve, Acts chapter 6. Like, get some Paul, men of good report. Barnabas, yep. yeah. uh, they, hand, they laid hands on Barnabas and Saul in Acts 13. Paul goes to the house of a sick man and prays for him. Hands are laid upon him for healing, but it doesn't indicate that prayer was done. So he laid hands and he literally, you know, healed. But uh, so I put, you know, does laying on of hands matter? Not necessarily, but it is modeled sometimes. And it's even uh, it's even given as a ministry of the church. In the book of James, it says mm, this. Mm -hmm. um, it says, "Is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name mm -hmm. of the Lord." So this is anointing, and the mm -hmm. anointing often is paired with the laying out of hands. Yes, yeah. this, this mm -hmm. anointing with oil. And it's, it's, it's this ministry of the church is not given to the elders; it's given to the people of the congregation of yeah. the community, saying, "If you're sick." You can call your elders to come yeah, yeah, right. and anoint you with oil and lay hands on you and pray for you. Yes. And this is something that we're, we're pastors, we're elders. This is something we do. Yeah. But you know, if, if people ask, we come. 100%. People don't ask very often. Right. Uh, but when they do, we, at our church, we'll gather the elders, we'll lay hands, and we'll beg God. Um, I remember years ago, we had a lady come in, and her and her husband were just desired a child. And it just, they put money up for the stuff they do mm -hmm. all the things you gotta you know, it, it's just real dis, it's it's a real disheartening process to go through if you've ever been battled with infertility and um she's like we just we're almost just want to give up but can you just pray for us yeah. that god would hear our prayer and give us a child and so all of us pastors came together and we prayed laid hands on her we prayed and there was tears like we asked god for the desire of this woman's heart and um life moves on and then she comes back two months later and she's like we're pregnant but again it's real scary because they often had a lot of miscarriages early on yeah, so yeah. we're just like we're, we're praying like lord and then she comes back and it's like well we're pregnant and it's like not just one kid it was three kids wow and um 
Some might say, well, she did those things earlier that didn't work. But maybe some of the fertilities have stayed in her. I don't know. I don't. But man, the Lord gave her yep. those three kids, and I still to this day, I still I watch those kids grow up, and I'm just like miracle babies right there. I have had that exact story happen, and they, the doctor said that there was no way they could have a baby. They didn't do any treatment. They, they didn't do anything and just were committed to adoption, which I think is still the case. And the same thing, we prayed. And uh, and I don't want to, like, again, I'm, I'm reluctant to say this because there's some people that are really burdened out there maybe that, uh, you know, want to have a baby and they haven't so far and all that. But uh, we did pray and uh, same thing, time goes by. And I didn't even know these people that well. They just got, and then the, the husband came back. He goes, you're not going to believe this. Like, she's pregnant and they had the baby and i think they had another one like it just went away like it was like but it was it was great man i mean so yeah the, but the point laying on of hands i don't think it's a magical power it is no. modeled in the bible and i i do it sometimes it's not powerful. all the time but i do it Listen. i i did it sunday a, a, a lady came up and I, I put my hand on her and we prayed we did it sunday too yeah. lady came up she's like i, I need prayer and we gathered around her husband and her. We laid me and some of the ladies of the church. We laid mm -hmm. hands on her. We mm -hmm. prayed for her. Yeah. And it, it, there's there's tears. There's agreement. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. The laying on of hands is a powerful thing. Just in the Bible, there's this thing called like the blessing given. I was just gonna say like, and what is a, the what like, do you think the thing is? Like, I don't know like, the correlation, but there's this this there's almost like this um, symbolism of okay. giving, like like you're giving bestow yeah, something you're bestowing yeah. um your love okay you're bestowing your belief in them but you're also maybe even like like i, I mean i i'm a, a mystery guy okay i'm a supernatural yeah. guy yeah sometimes almost it's like you're almost giving like look, lord i love you gives like whatever you got just let us give it to her you know, so I feel all those things you just said, but I never could have put those words on. That's what I feel like I'm doing. Like when I say, you know, hey, and I, I don't always do it. Sometimes we're, I'm just there. Oh, let me pray for you real quick. But many times, like when we were in India together, I put my hands on every person I prayed for. I put my hands on their shoulders, and, and that's what I felt in my. I thought I don't. I'm not a holy man. I don't want to act like that. But but I felt like okay, this is. I don't know if they know the Lord. I don't know what they believe. I don't know what confusion is in the air. But I am trying to be a vessel um, through listen. which God will work and reveal himself, not me, reveal himself through me to them. When I was a, a youth pastor, the la we would go to summer camp every year. And the last night at camp, we'd always do this campfire. I'd do a, a boys campfire and then I'd do a girls campfire separate mm -hmm. because boys and girls, junior high, they're just like, I love you. Like, so I give yeah. them a separate just so I can keep <clears throat> real conversation happening. Yep. Keep the drama at bay. And one thing we'd do every year is I'd get all the leaders and I'll tell the kids, okay, we're going to sit here. And someone will play a guitar, strum it. I'm like, I want you to sit here. And leaders that know you're going to come around, they're going to, they're going to lay hands and pray for you by name. Yeah. And most of those kids have never, ever had anyone, not, yeah, their, right. not their mom, yeah. not their dad, lay hands on them, call them by name and pray for them. And kids would cry, dude. We'd pray for yeah, their life. Amazing. We'd pray for their future. We'd pray for their struggles. We knew these kids, you know. Huh. To, to this day, some of those kids call. And they remember that. Yeah. Remember that time you prayed over me when I was in eighth grade? Like, yeah. Like, like there's, there's, I mean, think about the, right. in the Old Testament, this, these guys, they, they wanted their father's blessing. They wanted the yeah. laying on of the hands. So now I will say too, boy, this, this person really unpacked the thing here. Like they, they blew up a, it, it in a good way on the, I've been on the receiving end and it has been a real blessing. I was one time on the mission field years ago, like a decade ago. I was down. I mean, I'm talking. You've you've been there. I'm talking rocked. Could I, like I I like was up in the night and I could not get out of bed. I was, you know, your stomach and things I can't even talk about. It, it was I was lit on fire, and people came to the side of my bed. Pastor, could we could we lay hands and pray for you? And I got to be honest. In my mind, I thought nothing stopping this train. Like <laughs> you go right ahead. Like yeah. nothing stopping. And they did that, and I'm kidding. I'm not kidding you. Within ten minutes, I stood up out of bed and got in the van and went and did ministry all day. And I, I look back to that because I know what I am when I'm sick. It was a miracle of God in heaven, and they they put their hands and it. I could feel like just peace, and I thought I was just so thankful that they were praying the words that I couldn't even think of because I was so sick. And they just really asked the Lord for help for me, and it and it just restored my strength. I got up and walked out of there, dude. 
It was I, amazing. I told you before, COVID was killing me, dude. I was I was mm-hmm. fading from life. It was, I tried to beat it. I I just it slowly just beat me down. It's like mm-hmm. my breath was going away. My lungs were closing off. Yeah. And when it got re- the worst night, of the the a real bad. And she calls her nurse brother in law, and they're saying, "Listen, this is this is real bad." That they, they're counting their breath per per minute. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. Right. It's real bad. Mm-hmm. She called the hospital. They had no beds because Flint got rocked. Dude, uh, we have a high African American population. Mm-hmm. It cut through them like yep. it was it was real bad. And I remember with the, that night, she laid hands and she begged God for my life. And the next day, I woke up and I just it's like the. Someone took the weight off the lungs. Yeah. It just, it just, it, I'm like, I'm going to live. Like, I'm, I went, to, I, I made peace with God. I was like, Lord, if you take me, I'm, I'm ready. And he's just like, no. <laughs> and uh, I, I've been in places where I've, I've been at conference. I've gone forward to get prayed over and I've broken into pieces. Yeah, same. Yep. Like God is just like, yes, they, 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 they pray. This is a stranger praying for me, but there's someone yeah. that loves Jesus. Yes. They know I'm there because I'm in the fight mm-hmm. and they're asking God, encourage this young man. And I have just come to peace because I, I just feel through them, God speaking over me. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it doesn't happen very often in life. I agree. Um, I agree but it's that. something when it does. Yes. Um, so if you, the, the, she asks, you know, if I have a sip from someone that's sick, kindly lay hands on them and pray. Yeah, you can lay hands on someone yeah. you love and pray for them. Yeah, I recommend it. You don't have to, but I, I think it's good. Yeah. Biblical. I knew a it's nurse good. who used to walk. Uh, she was uh, worked in the babies. She'd walk through and just lay hands oh, on the babies great. and pray over each it's little great. baby that was newborn. This is not out loud. She just in her mm-hmm. heart praying, mm-hmm. just asking God, watch out for this one. Watch mm-hmm. out. Dude, in India, I'd pray for the kids, and I'd just be laying my hands oh. on their head. I'm like, God, protect. Because India's brutal on yes. children. Yes, yes. And, like, and, and so prayer is powerful. And you said you feel powerless when it comes to the sick relative you have. Who, the, in, the lady said The that? lady in the email. Okay, yeah. Listen, in one sense, you are powerless. You can't, there's no advice you can give. There's no money you can give. Nothing you do can fight cancer or leukemia or whatever it is you're facing. But we're not powerless mm-hmm. because we know he who has all power. Yeah, man. So go to Christ. Go to the Father through Christ. Mm-hmm. Approach that throne of grace with confidence. Yep. There's there's power in the in the Lord, power in the name. So with that said, uh, if you want to ask any questions, you can go to um, Encore. Encore at rockfenton.com. And we'd love to hear your questions. We answer them here uh, next time on our show. Yep. So with that said, God bless you all. Grace and peace.